That's not a good sound. It's a great day for America, fangirls and fanboys. We've got lots of things to talk about this week. Corrigan Vaughn and Kristen Latterell here, your faithful sidekicks in the journey through pop culture. Today on the show, we talk Dwayne The Rock Johnson, comic book movie casting news, the 20th anniversary of The Little Rascals movie, a potentially game-changing discovery regarding the mysterious Jack the Ripper, and a hilarious interview blunder with Downton Abbey's Dan Stevens. We're going to play a little game in which Kristen tries to guess the title of films from terrible plot summaries, and we're going to start a game of Netflix Roulette, which we want you to play along with. All right, all right, let's do this. Hey, Kristen. Hey, Corey. How's it going? Oh, it's good. I kind of wish we had further clarified the Netflix Roulette game before I played it by myself this weekend. <laughs> Just fantastic. I told Kristen, I thought at least this part was implied. I messaged her, I was like, I think we should play Netflix Roulette. I sent her a link to what Netflix Roulette is, which I'll explain in a minute. But um, well, okay, well, I, I mean, technically, what you had said was, and then we'll talk about it. I yeah, mean, but what I said we'll was, on Monday, we will I, play it. So I thought that what was at least implied was that we'd do it together, like we both. I thought we were each. I thought we were each going to play it and then talk about what we had to watch. Uh, no. So Kristen just watched a terrible movie God, for no so reason. Terrible. Um, so terrible. Is there someone honking outside? No, there's your- a car alarm. Oh, oh it's done. It was like really spastic. It was like, should have timed our talking to it. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna play it. Now we're really gonna play it. Yeah. So what? Do you have it up? Or are you gonna click it? Um, I don't have it up, but I was thinking we should set some parameters for it. Um, okay. So here's what Netflix roulette, roulette is, everybody. Oh yes. The idea of Netflix roulette is it's if this, you're not um, careful, you'll get something called the Street King. Yeah. It is miserable. <laughs> A Do not watch modern it. Modern Latino retelling of Richard the Third. I don't see how that could go wrong. But what you do is basically it's this app or this website that you um, you can put in things like, I want movies that have gotten four stars or more or things like that. Or you can just do anything. Definitely. Um, and you spin it and it picks a random movie that's on Netflix instant streaming and you watch, watch that it. movie. So it's a good way, like, when you're kind of in your Netflix funk and you can't there pick are, and something. There are, there's times when you, you feel can... completely overwhelmed, even yeah. though I've got, like, 90 things on my queue. I'm like, I have nothing to watch. I don't yeah. even know. I have millions yes. on my queue. So it's like it kind of picks for you. The thing is, if you set right. it for just any amount of stars and everything, uh, you get crazy stuff, which is fun. So I think here's the two rules I'm thinking we should set out. One, okay. no documentaries. has to be, like, a you know, a movie with a narrative, okay. you know, and two, it has to be in English. So okay. if we spin it and it doesn't come up, if it comes up as a documentary or foreign language, then we're not watching that because okay. yeah, I said so. Um, and so we want, uh, if you're listening to this and you want to play along, we're going to spin the wheel right now. Kristen's going to spin it. We're going to find gonna something to watch. Okay. And okay. this week, we're going to watch this movie and you can tweet us or email us or Facebook us and uh, give us your thoughts on the movie. If you want to live tweet it to us as you watch, uh, go ahead um, and we will uh, include some of the things you have to say about this movie when we meet next week. So yes. let's do this, Kristen. What do we what do okay. we get? I don't even have it open. OK, sorry. Do you just Google Netflix Roulette? How does yeah, this Yeah, I think work? it's netflixroulette.org, but uh, or you can Netflix just roulette.net. Oh, net, that's it. Yeah. That would make more sense. There's too many work. dots. I f- okay, so can you even All right, so we're just going to we don't want to do TV shows, we're including TV shows. Was that one of the uh, No TV a- shows. No TV shows. Sorry, I should have made that a rule too. It's got to be okay. Movie. Okay, spinning. <sighs> oh god, this looks bad. Oh, no, wait, what do we get? I feel like you've probably already seen it, though. Okay, what is it? Code Red, The Rubicon Conspiracy. I have not seen that. Do you want to hear the synopsis? Yeah, let's hear what this... uh... Okay, the cast is... Well, the cast is Brian McNamara and Marjean Holden. Oh, this looks... This cover looks terrible. Yeah. So the cover looks terrible. In the dark heart of the African rainforest, a top-secret U.S. government project to make first contact has gone terribly wrong. 
ace guerrilla fighter Peter Doyle, oh, sorry, Lieutenant Peter Doyle, oh, is forced out of retirement, of course, to mm -hmm. rescue the situation and save the one man who may have survived, his brother. They shouldn't have given that away. So I know, quickly. right? Spoiler but alert. But deep in the jungle, something waits. The crack commando squad, what? The crack commando squad have no idea that they are about to encounter the ultimate hunter, an alien cyborg warrior. What? So wait, isn't this just, um... It's like Predator. Yeah, isn't this Predator? Basically. Is this like Predator 2? I think this is Predator the Ripoff. Is oh my gosh. Is, which I'm actually awesome. I'm actually very excited about this yeah. now that I've read it. Yeah, because at least okay. this one is like, like the one that you got stuck watching before is kind of taking itself seriously. We know this is going to be awful. Awful. Yes. Okay, so um, as a reminder for those of you listening, Code Red, the Rubicon, colon, the Rubicon Conspiracy from 2001. Yeah. Yep. Look it up on Netflix Instant. Watch it. Tell us what you think. You can Share tweet us. in our misery. Yeah. At Electric Listeners. Fan Cave. You can comment on the blog on electricfeast.com. You can go on the Facebook Electric Feast. Or you can email us electricfancave at gmail.com. Uh, or on the YouTube. Or Twitter. The YouTube can for you this. tweet us? I tweet it. I said tweet. Yeah. You did? Or put it in That's our ask box We have a Tumblr. Tumblr. I don't even know yeah. how that works. Yeah, put it in our ask box on Tumblr. Whatever the case may ask. be. However you want to contact us, we'll check them. Let us know how... What, what's it called again? What's the first word? The code. The red code. code. Nope, code the red. Co code red. So it's kind of like... I'm going to remember this this way. Code okay. red. Just like in A Few Good Men. They did a code red. Just like that. Mm-hmm. The Rubicon, this is a mouthful, the Rubicon Conspiracy. It really, there's a lot of cuh in it. There's also is, a lot happening in this. There's a lot happening. I have I have really high hopes for this. I think it's going to be a Man. lot of fun. So we'll check back with you next week about uh, the results of this um, game. For now, we'll, we'll move on to other things. I would just like to point out, though, um, this, is a, this is my last day of being 28 years old. I'm freaking out a little bit. You're 28, feeling 28. That was supposed to be 22, but that wasn't the right. Yeah, it doesn't. Like, totally mm, yeah, I was like, that doesn't even sound like that. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm going to be 29 tomorrow, which is the last That's year of the 20s. That's crazy pants. That's super crazy pants, isn't it? I don't. Uh, Oh my gosh, terrifying. how big of a party are you going to have next year? You should have, like, you know what you should do is throw the university, the university, the universe for a loop and have a huge party this year. I, I think I already had my birthday party, though, so. Oh. You were there. I was there. <laughs> well, <laughs> Dang it! Never mind. Why didn't you think of this last week, Kristen? I don't know, because we didn't talk about it, but you are going to be 29. I'm going to be 29, and that's insane. I don't, I don't know what to do about that. Like, I don't know when you leave your 20s, like... I mean, life's over, right? Isn't that how that works? Yes. Isn't that the definitely. rules? And now you get to check a new box, right? Isn't this where, like, doesn't it end at 28 or does it end at 29? Oh, my gosh. That's a good question. On like, your age I mean, box. I think it depends on, like, the demographics and everything yeah. and stuff. Well, let's so, Google a census. What is yeah, the census? Yeah, like 18 to 22 happen? and 23 to, yeah, like 23 to 28. I don't know. Oh, Dude, gosh. that could be you. You could be in a brand new demographic. Yeah. I remember being really excited about that when I was 18. Well, everything's and exciting when you're 18. This is true. At um, this point, like, I helped someone. I, like, removed a toilet seat on Friday, and I'm so sore from that adventure that I'm like, I am so old. It's not even funny. <laughs> uh, no longer spry. And, I'm not, uh, you know, we're not into those things. You're not. We're not. And that's you're dirty 30. Dirty 30 flirty and thriving. Uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see if I make it that far. I don't know. That's, uh, 30 is a big deal. It's old. That's over the hill. Anything can happen from that point. 30 is the new 50. 40. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Anyways, 30 is the new 60, Grandma. But, but for this, uh, this my 29th birthday festivities, I did go see Purple Rain at um, the Hollywood Forever Cemetery yeah. the other day. Uh-oh. Did you meet Prince? I didn't meet Prince, but... Oh. Um, is that his name now? I forget. It is. He's he's Prince it's, again. It's not back yeah. to no, symbol. No, it's not symbol or artist formerly known as. He is actually Prince at this point. But DJ Questlove was like spinning what? at the thing, so That's he was cool. awesome with his little pick in his hair and 
is okay. oh gosh he was so much fun so that was really cool and one of these things i think i went to the best two cemetery screenings of the year because empire records was obviously the first one i went to ended in spontaneous dance party of course purple rain lots of dancing lots of quoting along um and it was absolutely glorious uh at I think one of my favorite things was when um, Morris Day in the Time does the the bird that all of a sudden everyone around us was just up and doing it and uh, squawking and singing along. Of course they were. It was glorious. I love these kinds of things where you get to get together with a whole bunch of people who are just like uninhibited because it's dark and they're surrounded by dead people and they just they just go, yeah. you know, they just do what they want to do. Uh, you know, you do you. You do you. But I, and I couldn't stop thinking of uh, Ben Baudet while we were there and his his uh, way of playing the um, That Ain't Lake Minnetonka line. Uh, <laughs> if you go back a couple weeks in the podcast, you can see uh, his interpretation of how he thinks Prince probably should have delivered that line. Um, yeah. And it was glorious. But yeah. Anyways, that's happening. I just wanted to let everyone know that I'm going through an existential crisis right now. Oh, uh, gosh. I'm sorry. Well, let me know if I can help you remind you how old you are. Yeah. You know I what you should do is to. today I watched one of those things, you know, it's like teenagers react. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you see the one today? No, what was the new one? It was they gave them an NES, like original I Nintendo. I saw the clip for it, but I didn't actually watch it. I was so horrified. But then, like, sometimes I'd be like, okay, good. Like, this kid... Is like he knows, yeah. you know. You should have seen them. They, so then they're like, "Do you want to play it?" They're like, "Oh yeah, totally." And there was this like cup, like these people that were just adorable. This like couple, guy and girl that were together doing their interview, and they were hysterical because they were like, the girl was just incredulous the whole time, like, "What <laughs> is this?" <laughs> you know. <laughs> but then they're like, they give them the game, and they're like, "Okay, like let's play it." And so they hand them Super Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt, the combo game. Oh uh, yeah, perfect. <laughs> yep. Both the every single one of the kids like. Picks up the console, like looks, has no idea how to put it in. Oh my god! Picks it up and then they like lift up the thing, like the little door to, mm-hmm. and they're like, oh, oh, and they're like, and the what's the girl from Game of Thrones that does it? Yeah, Maisie, Maisie something. Maisie something. Yeah. Williams, I think. I was gonna say they, Williams, like, but I thought I was making. And it up. all of them, I think they showed like not all of them, maybe like three of them, all like put it in. They're like, oh my gosh! So they put it in, but they didn't press it down. So they just put it in and then closed the door. Like, did we? Did I do it? Was that it? And they're like, oh my guys god. are like, there's one more step, and she's like. Oh, she like <laughs> opens it and she's like, oh, and like presses it. And of course they go to play it green, flashing, not working. Naturally. They click reset, doesn't work. They turn it off, turn it Did back on. Did they think to blow? None of them thought to blow. They're like, I don't think it's working. Like, um, and so the guy's like, well, there's this, you know, legend that if you blow on it, then it would work. So yeah. they're like, okay. So they all do that. And some of it got to work. So they're excited. Supposedly but, that's really bad for the cartridge. Cause you're like, blowing yeah, condensation it gets, like, into it in there and, and that, stuff, but, but it was, but it seemed to hysterical. work. So it did. It that's did seem so funny. Work. I so have to watch start that playing one. it. And they're like, this one girl tried the mush. So she's trying to get the mushroom, but it goes back, you know? And then once it goes, yeah. and she's like, wait, you can't go back in this game. <laughs> Oh my god! It was beautiful. It was really beautiful. And this one kid didn't even like pass the level, the first level. And he goes like, "How many people? How many people passed it?" And the, the like guy that's doing, he's like, "Everybody has passed it." <laughs> this kid was just so defeated. It was Aww. it was pretty glorious, but it did make me feel old. Yeah. As did the picture of the little rascals twentieth. Oh reunion yeah. picture. I can't wrap my head around the fact that it has been 20 years since the I Little know. Rascals come out. And Bug Hall, I believe, is the same age as us, the kid who played Alfalfa. Yeah. And so I'm like, he is a, a grown-ass man. Um, He's a grown man. He's tall. And he's tall. Um, Very tall. And so they managed to get basically the whole child cast to come back yeah. and take these photos that are like they're in costume as their characters from 20 years Which is ago. So good. And you don't see that very often. You no. Know? There's, there's always there's like always half like the cast they can't find. Yeah, or yeah. the one who got famous that like refuses to do anything. Like full yeah. house reunions, you know? It's like yes. everybody except, except the, Olsen for the Olsen twins. twins. Yeah. yeah. Um, but they all got together and they're adorable. So adorable. So I was cute. just in heaven. Yeah, I, I just loved it. I think I have a crush on the kid who played Porky. He is oh my God. so cute. He's wearing suspenders in the in the pictures. I'm like, oh hey you, you can get it. <laughs> you know, 
Get it, get it, get it, get it. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, yeah, but it was just, it was craziness. Yeah, because you look back and it's, I mean, I own this movie. I've watched right. it a million times and um, it's, a, it's a favorite. And it just feels weird to, I, I still am in that point in my life where I think 20 years ago I was a fetus. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm like, I don't remember 20 years ago. And I'm like, yeah. oh, I guess I do remember 20 years yeah. ago because I love this movie. You know, right? it's... like I still think 10 years ago was the 90s when people say it. And then I have to think about it. I'm like, no, that's not true. It wasn't. Yeah. Or, yeah. No, it's true. Yes. yes. <laughs> Incredulous Christian Sputter. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's true, though, because you're just like, well, that was so long ago. And I'm yeah. like, I guess I was in elementary school. I was eight. <laughs> yeah. You were almost 10. I was almost 10. Oh, God. Jeez. And But they all look good, which is nice. They like, do. None of them are, you're like, oh, they've hit some bad luck or anything. I yeah, mean, none of them look like they were in Bat County. <laughs> Say that much. Bat Country? Isn't that what we were? Dang it. Is yeah. That what it is? We're never going to get that right. We're never going to get that reference correct. Nope. I'm, I'm still not sure whether it's Barstow or ba- Bakersfield. Baker- Bakersfield? Baker? What's... No, mm. Baker was the one with the giant thermometer. That was it, or was that Barstow? It was because I it thought Baker. it was okay. Barstow, but okay. I corrected that it, anyway. Uh, Let's not go down that rabbit hole. Ugh. But yeah, they it, no, they not, all look pretty good, and, and they just uh, look like they're having so much fun hanging yeah. out. And the fact that they redid the "I Got a Dollar" scene, I almost cried. Yes. Just, oh my gosh, that's one of. I mean, that's an iconic scene. Uh, I quote that regularly yeah didn't we just do it the other day one dollar in my wallet i'm like i got a dollar i got a dollar i got a dollar you know and i'm like yep so excited but oh it's so good and i don't know i just it's always heartening when you can see like a reunion of this sort happen and everybody seems happy and they like each other and you know whatever they're doing in their careers everything seems to be okay and that's a big child cast, so you have a lot of room mm-hmm. for things to go wrong. But totally. And not too long ago, um, the Sandlot did the same thing. They they had a yes. reunion, but what, Tom but, Geary wasn't in it, right? You know, I actually okay. I don't remember so much being. I don't actually remember so much the reunion part. I do remember the pictures of the then and now. Yeah. And they were showing like, and it wasn't even. They weren't even really together. It's like, oh, so here's so and so, and I just okay. remember that Benny the Jet Rodriguez is a fireman in L.A. Yep. And I'm like really yeah. thinking about setting fire to something <laughs> in Los Angeles. I was like, seriously, I'm seriously considering arson right now. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure you weren't the only one. Because girl. guess what? He's just as beautiful. He's gorgeous. Oh man. And I wasn't when I was a kid. I was like all about Smalls. Um, but now as an adult, I'm like clearly. He was probably the better choice, Benny the Jet Rodriguez. Clearly, uh, clearly, duh. Yeah, I don't. I didn't know. I was. I was a dumb kid. I always liked like the, like in boy bands and stuff. I'd always like the weird, awkward one. Or oh, so you, you know. were a Lance fan. Yeah, I loved Lance. I mean, like in. Did the you love Chris scheme. too? Well, let's not get crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I draw the line at pineapple hair. Poor Chris. Poor Chris. I don't even. Chris Kirkpatrick and Joey Fatone just make no sense to me. Like, how do you end up in a boy band? Whoa. Joey Fatone was cool, okay? Sure. He was cooler than Chris. Well, yeah, that's a low bar. In the ranking of the people in NSYNC, he was in the top <laughs> tier. <laughs> after after the actual Jace cool people like Justin and JC. Oh, man. Um, but yeah. I also, I liked Justin Jeffrey in 98 Degrees. And when I look at that now, I'm like, oh, like how did he even get into a boy band? Because he was, like, thing? old. I don't know. I think he's the same age as the other guys. It's just he's like pale and dumpy and he had that bleached hair and everything. Bleached hair was cool at the time. So yeah, that's true. I can be forgiven for that because that was that was a thing. I mean, he was just in with the trends. But oh, my gosh. Yeah, I couldn't even. Anyway, taste. But yeah, I I, there was like sort of a Sandlot reunion and there's a photo of a bunch of them together. um, And but I don't think that. Tom Geary was in it. But he's too cool now. I don't know if he's too cool. Like Donnelly, so now I feel like, like, unfortunately, yeah. I think that he is one of those child stars who has life problems, you oh. know, unfortunately. He's, he's a little Donnelly. more like his Black Donnelly's character than one oh. would hope, you know. Just unfortunate Tom, because... Make good choices. Him. Yeah, okay. make good choices, Tom, because I'm Team Geary. Well, I'm a man. I'm Team Benny. Yeah, that's fine. Team Smalls, Team Benny. We should have hats. We should you have should. hats. I don't know why we don't have Sandlot hats. 
It's another movie I watch. You can get times. the ugly fish hat. <laughs> yes. The other day, I almost for my birthday party, it was uh, sports themed, and I almost wore like a hat to it. And I realized the bill was a little long, and I had it sort of pointed up, and I was like, "Oh, I look like Smalls." Uh, should have rocked it. I would have appreciated it. I should have. I imagine all night people would have been telling me, "You're killing me, Smalls." Yes. Oh, 100 percent. 100 percent. Yeah. Which would have been fine. Uh, this These pictures are fantastic, so we'll link to it on the blog. It's just so cute, so yeah. adorable. And I, like, then, of course, had to Twitter stalk most of them. And they all seem just like precious people. Yeah. <laughs> which is wonderful. It just, it made my heart happy on so yeah. many levels. Me so you too. don't want to miss these pictures, you guys. You don't. You really don't. Go to the blog. Yeah. Check them Look out. Down. You'll be happy. I even made one of them my cover photo for a minute. Yeah. Until I You're saw welcome. F- yeah. You're welcome, saw... Internet. We've done you a favor. <laughs> Until I saw Frank and became obsessed with it. And now Frank oh, is my cover photo. Oh, my God. That's another thing. Everybody, go watch Frank. It is a wonderful movie okay. with Michael Fassbender and one of the Weasleys and Maggie Gyllenhaal. Mm. Who yeah, Sad that's not normally, though. that's not a selling point usually for me, but it's so good. It's so good. I'm mm. obsessed with it. Okay. Anyway, um, another thing that has happened is that The Rock announced that he will be playing Black Adam in Mm. Shazam. Uh, Not to be confused with Kazam. Kazam. (laughs) Both Kristen and I went through this where we were trying to figure out, we're like, I don't know anything about Black Adam. Like, that name isn't even familiar. But it's cool. Let's Google it. So I'm going to Google it. Yeah. And then immediately the next thought was, is this related to that movie with (laughs) Shaq? Like, oh, that's Kazam. I mean, and this is how bad it was, is that I couldn't even remember what that movie was, so I googled Shaquille O'Neal Shazam, and then it came up with Kazam. (laughs) Did you mean Kazam? (laughs) Yes. That's exactly what I meant. I was like, oh, Google, I'm so glad you're smarter than Mm -hmm. me, because I didn't even know. Seriously. I think I've been making that mistake for, like, 20 years. Um, Yeah. But here's the thing. So, uh, maybe... I don't know how many of our listeners are familiar with Black Adam or Shazam either, so we figured we'd do you a solid... And do the bare minimum of research we will. on this. So of all the reading that I've done, yeah. which is one article that Corey sent me. <laughs> 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 and um, it, it, <clears throat> so Black Adam is DC for those. Yes. So let's even start there, which is confusing because apparently there's a, 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 a Captain, Captain Marvel. Marvel. Yeah. That's so, and let's, wrong. yeah, let's start with that. Cause Shazam for one thing is, I didn't know so what this was. And he, Shazam yeah. is a Egyptian wizard. Yes. Old school Egyptian wizard who has all these crazy powers, and so Black Adam is was kind of created as his Nemesis, opposite. Guess, so yeah. he has all, all the same powers as Shazam, but he uses them for evil things. Yeah, so and he, the, he the powers are the, to the dark side. Yeah, he's called Shazam because he has the power of six mythological fe- 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 figures: Solomon, Hercules, Atlas, Zeus, Achilles, and Mercury. Hence. Shazam. Shazam. When it says Solomon, does it mean like King Solomon? Does yeah. That mean he's like so he has wise? the wisdom of Solomon, okay. the strength of Hercules, yeah. um, the endurance of Atlas, the power of Zeus. What was the other A? It's Achilles. Is that right? Yeah, Achilles. So I don't know has what Achilles is. a bad heel, I guess. Um, <laughs> and then. <laughs> and Mercury. He can run really fast. Yeah, that's it. That sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing so well. It's I like, know. I, I you were know. really impressive for a minute what there. What did Achilles... I don't even remember. I'm, all I remember is he had the heel. I, and I also remember that guy on Wheel of Fortune who um, didn't get his money because he said, Achilles. <laughs> oh, that poor guy. <laughs> that guy was having a rough day. Rough day. Yeah. But anyway, so Shazam... Find, so the Shazam's kind of story is he's this wizard and he kind of makes Captain Marvel a little bit. So Billy Batjen or whatever the guy's name is... He gets these powers from whenever he says Shazam, he gets he becomes Captain Marvel and has all these powers. And his name's an anag- is an anagram for something too. Yeah. I don't know what those ones were. I never even heard of those people. So no. anyway, so but the interesting thing that this article was saying about Black Adam is that because everyone's like, so The Rock chose to be a bad guy, yeah. like because supposedly he had playing- a choice between yeah. Shazam and and, and, um, and Black Adam. But apparently, Black Adam is not only like can be the arch nemesis of Shazam but he's also tends to be like an anti-hero yeah. so sometimes he, they kind of join forces and so technically they were saying this article was like dude they, he got it right because Black Adam is so much cooler than yeah. any of the other characters like they're comparing and him to Loki in, yeah, and what so he's, he's become in the Marvel universe right and although really if Loki had been played by anybody else I don't know how awesome he would right be. I mean that's clearly a Hiddleston but thing I love The Rock I mean yeah. my brother and I spent 
a Saturday the other day watching <laughs> his like the three disc set that I bought him of all of The Rock's best wrestling fights. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, that's phenomenal. I'm you glad know? that exists. Yeah. So, and I sometimes call people a jabroni, and that's how much I love The Rock. I mean, it goes old school. I don't school. even know what that means. She, oh my gosh, the people's champion forever, people. That's how much I love him. So, this I is, personally am This is where uh, Kristen becomes way whiter than I am. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's moments like these. I'm like, oh, oh. yeah, 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 uh-huh. Sure. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I was super into it. Yeah. Uh, we have a friend. Anyway, we should, the, um, so, Black Adam was oh, yeah. pretty cool. And so they, they're yeah. making this movie. They don't, he seems to be the only person cast because then I IMDb'd it and they didn't even have oh, a Shazam yet. Yeah, because he turned so. it down to be Black Adam, I guess. Uh, this is actually making me very excited for this. Also, because reading all this backstory stuff, as I've said a million times in this show, I don't read DC and I don't know anything about DC properties at all. Um, and, and I also feel a little vindicated in this because apparently he was Captain Marvel which is confusing because there's a Captain yeah. Marvel in Marvel and then they and they had taken the name from another comic that was earlier after they'd sued them and it's a whole mess. But the Shazam thing apparently came about like in 2011 they've been using Shazam as the name for this character. So I don't oh, yeah, feel they, like they, I'm super behind on it. Yeah, they kind of they because there's so much confusion they just kind of and plus they everyone kept thinking that Captain Marvel was Shazam. Right. But really it was his mentor so they're like, "And eh, we'll just kind of make yeah, him just, one." At this point. Merge. Because Shazam, I mean, essentially Shazam was grooming Marvel to be him right. when he died because he was so old. An Egy- exactly. ancient Egyptian wizard, which I'm like, I feel like if you've hung on for this long, Shazam, you could probably yeah, keep could going. Probably hold out. I mean, I mean yeah, let's be real. Um, so but, it actually, this is, now that I've read some backstory on this and I love The Rock, uh, this is just, it's sort of like putting Ben Affleck in the Superman movie that I'm like, okay, uh, I could get behind that. Now I feel a little more like, okay, I could watch this movie. Yeah. And I almost feel like it's it's DC's Guardians of the Galaxy in the sense that it's sort of a property that I don't think is mainstream and it's a little right. bit it's risky. it's not Batman or Superman. Yeah, it's not something everybody knows and is read forever and it's sort of got this recent arc that people can uh, jump, into jump into and be yeah. on board by the time it happens. So it, it has that, I mean, I don't think it's going to be Guardians of the Galaxy, let's be real, which I saw for the fourth time this weekend. Um but I think it has potential to sort of have that effect within the DC mm-hmm. universe. Like, let's pull out something that everyone hasn't heard 8,000 times, you know? Right. That could be fun. And Introduce whereas, people to a new yeah. book or storyline yeah. that they can maybe go and read. And right. Kind of thing, yeah, so. whereas, like, the Justice League people, like, yeah, we've all... Yeah. We've seen him a million times, yeah. but I've, and I'm sorry, but Black Adam is like a rad superhero name. Yeah, it totally or is. Not, I mean, it's like, that just the name yeah. means something that's going to be awesome. <laughs> Word. Um, yeah, so I'm excited about this. I think that's super cool. And hopefully that's helpful to those listening to have some clue of what the heck is going on with The Rock of this casting and what this is. And uh, we'll all confer when this um, this actually comes out and we'll, we'll see if we we're right or wrong about it. Um, yeah, so uh, let's, uh, should we go with, hmm, what do you think we should talk about next, Kristen? Any preference? I don't. I don't remember what else we have. Oh, that's right, because you didn't make notes today. Kristen is uncharacteristic. Well, usually you send me little notes too. That's true. I do. I do do that. To be fair. To be fair. Yeah. Um, I did. I was trying to go off my noggin. <laughs> too much Black about... Adam info. <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about Jack the Ripper then. Oh my God! Right! Oh my God! You guys, we just we had already conferred that this is the biggest thing to happen in science since the racetrack playa mystery of last week. <laughs> This is a big deal. I honestly deal. think that because so many scientific mysteries have been solved, that next week something bigger will surface. Yeah, uh, that of the world's going to end. But something, I mean, I'm hoping this is escalating scientific discovery, but I don't even know what's left that I want to know. Zodiac. I want to know Zodiac. Zodiac. That's true. Okay, so, so Jack the Ripper. Who missed, yeah. yeah, for those of you who've missed this, but I missed it. Corey had told me about it. Apparently, so they have found the identity of Jack the Ripper. Yep, supposedly. Through DNA. Yeah. Which I was like, now, on, granted, my sole knowledge of DNA comes from like CSI. CSI, and yeah. <laughs> so let's not base this on any kind of actual science that I'm talking from. 
So anyway, they, there was a bloody shawl, which this is a kind of a gross story anyway. Yes, one yes. of the detectives took it off the body of one of Jack Ripper's <laughs> victims and he gave it to his wife. Like yeah, she's like going to want this present. nasty bloody shawl. First of all, worst Thanks, husband son. ever. Happy anniversary. Yeah. yeah. Hey, babe, got this for you. Notice all this blood stain. It's really beautiful. It smells yeah. like blood. It's gross. Anyway. <laughs> So she was, like, super disgusted by it, as she should yeah. be. And so she just kind of, like, put it in a box. Although I still think I would have gotten rid of it, but she put it in a, kept it. So this guy that's kind of just like a amateur sleuth has always been fascinated with Jack the Ripper, buys it at an auction, takes it to some – and they kind of cross-referenced it with all of the, like, top five like suspects, suspects from the case. And they, they got a hit, which I'm just baffled by. And I just feel like after so long, how does it still – workable and that's the thing that i think is uh there's people saying okay listen we've we've thought we've solved the mystery a million times let's hold up here because this is clearly not a perfect sample they didn't even know dna was a thing when this shawl was found so who knows who's touched it and yeah. how contaminated this is and it wasn't a blind dna sample so the the you know scientists did know who they were looking for mm -hmm. which they think also contaminates it in some way um Regardless, I feel like finding this guy, so it's a Polish immigrant named Aaron Kosminski, and the Ripper killings stopped when he was sent to an insane asylum, where he later died. Uh, so I think, you know, that's kind of a, that lines up. And to actually be able to identify his DNA on this, supposedly the first strand of DNA was a 99.2% match, and the second strand was a 100% match from this ancestor, or not ancestor, what's the opposite of an ancestor? Descendant of uh, <laughs> this guy. I was like, nothing, that's what they are. <laughs> no, <yeah. laughs> yeah, of Aaron Kosminski. Um, and so, I mean, what are the odds, even if this is contaminated, that it's going to have his DNA mm. on it? Mm -hmm. I don't know how they would... I don't know how that would work. I mean, unless there's cross-contamination of some sort, which I've seen on SVU and whatnot. You know, they mix up the samples and things like that. Yeah, but, but why uh, was there already a sample of him? Yeah, but I am, like, genuinely, like, oh, my gosh. I worried my entire life that I would die not knowing who Jack the Ripper was. Yeah. Like, this has been a thing I have thought about on many occasions. What if I never know who Jack the Ripper is? I don't know if I can go to my grave that way. Well, I feel comfortable saying I know now, and I yes. can die. You can. There's That's that. good, because you're turning 29 tomorrow. Yeah, so, so now I'm ready. Epic Thank timing, goodness. world. Uh, but I think you're right, though. Zodiac is, is the next step from here. Uh, yeah. Especially, you know, having lived around that area for many years of my life, it was always, like, the story of the Zodiac and how they never yeah. found him. And, like, you'd always be kind of afraid when you go parking somewhere that you're like, ugh. And he choose, chose that night to come back from the right, yeah. his hiatus. Right, from his 30-year yeah. hiatus or whatever. So I think that clearly needs to be the next step. Um, yes. Come on, world. What are you waiting for, science? I mean, have they not done DNA with I don't know. Zodiac? I don't really follow the Zodiac. I just know that it's one of those ones that they never solved. So yeah. It's crazy to me that in this, they had. Yeah. in this day and age that there are still ones like that that they haven't solved and i know yeah. dna is an imperfect science and all that kind totally. of stuff that well, it's and one not of those and then one of that easy, things but... one of those things also oh god <laughs> words it's monday it's okay it is monday. uh oh airplane yeah sorry there's a plane flying over my the house i live under an airport what are you gonna do it's okay um i don't even remember what i was gonna say uh we were talking about dna the, yeah dna oh yeah i don't remember whatever okay, it was well. probably not important or sure, helpful it was, so it was a really good insight um, but yeah, so this is, this is pretty groundbreaking though. Uh, yeah, and I want, I want to believe, I want to believe I'm totally going to read this book when it comes out, which is exactly what this guy's aiming for is to get oh, us to, totally. to read this. Although book. also the you way that it. they were explaining him as some guy who's just like always kind of been into it and always been trying to solve it. And then finally it's like, Oh, we'll never be solved. <laughs> Can you imagine the feeling that guy must have had? Seriously. I can't even think of something. Yeah. Same, like, comparable in my life. I can be like, oh, when I found out. Yeah. I this, did this. This thing that I've always wanted to do. Yeah. And not only that, not only that he's always wanted to do, but that so many people yeah. have wondered. I mean, those weren't just like, oh, I've always wondered, you know, who my grandfather was. It's like, no, 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 no. no. This, this is, is like a, this is there are movies. the imagination. Yeah. There are countless movies. There's a Criminal Minds episode. Yeah. 
there's all kinds of uh, different conjecture on it and yeah. thinking that it's famous people maybe and all kinds of stuff uh, and to have a sort of you know name and face to put to it is, is super cool it would be amazing to be the person who finally did it you know yeah and, and the thing Although, is unfortunate i mean fortunate for the what's his name kaminsky kosminsky yeah Unfortunate for his family. <laughs> well, yes, who uh, gave the sample on condition of anonymity. So they clearly don't want to be, like, known. As, oh, so they don't have the same last name anymore. No, I don't think they do. Um, oh, or they're just sense. assuming there's enough of them in the world that... That no uh, one will know. No one's going to one know it's specifically them. Uh, but yeah, they apparently weren't super chuffed on being known as the descendants I wouldn't of want to Jeff either Cooper. I don't know I feel like I might I would probably kind you of would brag be. about it you I, would I would be. I totally yeah, would let's be real <laughs> if I found out that I'd be like that was a terrible thing that happened but guys I'm totally related to him <laughs> <laughs> there's no way I wouldn't well Corey uh, maybe you should it. do some digging maybe you actually are related yeah, I to am him. I mean I have like IRA and Molly Maguire's and stuff in my family so uh it's there just you go. it's just the next logical Step. That you would be one of the most notorious serial killers who have ever lived. Yeah, it would explain a lot. It would explain a whole lot. Um, yeah. yeah, so that, that happened, and that's really exciting for most of us, I think. Uh, and uh, You know uh, who should write the book? Who? Eric Larson. Oh, my God. A back then and a now. Can you imagine? Oh, my gosh. <sighs> I think my brain just exploded. Yeah, that would be clearly my favorite book of all time. That would be the dream of my life. Yeah, I... Hey, Eric, if you listen to our podcast, you should write this book. You, write this book. you know he's thinking about it, it. Would be on the same tier as Devil in the White City. And in the Garden of Beasts, let's be. Yeah. Let's be real. Well, I'm just saying favorite. serial killer wise, they're more the same than. That's true. Yeah. More like that. And, Although uh, I guess technically like a case could be made for in the Garden of Beasts also having serial killers. Serial but killers, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So good. Yeah. But oh that would gosh. be craziness. Yeah. Slash awesome. Now you've got like my heart rate up. I'm like, oh my god, Eric Larson writing this story. That would be incredible. You know, this is. I feel like it's going to be like when we thought Leonardo DiCaprio was going to be in the movie. Now it's just never going to yeah. be a thing. No, it's not a thing. Is it? Is it not a thing at all anymore? Though I feel like they keep. I don't know. They keep taunting. I stop us. looking at it because it just makes me mad. Yeah, stupid Catherine I'm Bigelow, a, going and making I'm just, Oscar-winning I'm just movies. Gonna wait, I'm going to wait until it's a for sure. Like there's like a trailer, a and trailer. Then I'm going to leave it. Yeah. That's that's probably a good way to do it. Um, uh, another thing that happened this week, uh, the Supernatural cast came out with a glorious video. I'm assuming it's special features for the okay, Blu-ray. Okay, well, here's the thing. So I tried to, so I couldn't watch it when you first sent it to me. Oh. So then I tried to watch it today, and then I clicked on the link, and it said that the video was they took it down. Gone. That's so why I'm thinking to... it was probably it's probably from the DVD, and uh, and so well. they they took it off the air. So what it is, um, and so we'll just briefly touch on it since you didn't get a chance to see it, um, is this behind the scenes from a fan's perspective, and it's really Misha Collins just letting himself. Oh my be gosh, Stop it! Humiliated the whole oh, time. No, I'm sad that I missed it's it. It's so good, and so he is walking around with this fan who clearly is more excited about Jensen and Jared. And they have, like, basically Jensen, instead of being this manly man, is, like, behind the scenes, he's, like, doing, like, cucumber masks and listening to New Age music <laughs> and doing, like, Tybo and eating vegan. And Jared's hair is not real. It's a wig. <laughs> and <laughs> all of this stuff. And it's so freaking good. And it has a cameo from, um, uh, who's Lassie on Psych. Um, <gasps> yeah, I know. It has a Lassie cameo. Um... Why is his name not coming to me right now? Oh my gosh, Brienne would be so disappointed in us right now. I know. And I knew it off the top of my head when I told Brienne this happened, but it, it'll come to me all of a sudden. I and can I'm just going to call his... it out. Um, he, there's a cameo from him in it. There's also a ca cameo from uh, the trickster. Uh, <gasps> yeah. Oh, I love the trickster. I know. Whom I met once and is adorable and lovely. Uh, and so I was really excited to see that. You guys, if you're a Supernatural fan. You need to see this. Apparently, just... you have to get the DVD because. Yeah. Well, no, I found a YouTube video and it's on the blog. So. Oh, it is. Look for on now. the blog. Yeah, for now until CW or whoever. Timothy Amundsen. Ah, that's it, Timothy Amundsen. Uh, he is. He has a cameo in it. Just really quickly, blink and you'll miss it. But he's funny. Uh, it's great. Watch it. 
That's all I'm saying, Kristen. You'll you'll have to actually get on this and. Hey, I'm. I will do that. Yeah, I'll post it or I'll send you the link just in case you know before that happens. So another thing though in fandom is that Tom Hiddleston uh, showed up at like what is this a county fair? Is that I'm sorry. I'm just I'm dead. sweating. I know. Just thinking about it. has that effect. He, it's he's at like some county fair. Yeah, and it is. He gets on stage and he's apparently playing Hank Williams in an upcoming biopic. And he sings a Hank Williams song with the band and nails it. Of and course. it's wonderful. It's wonderful. Uh, and He's it's got the twang oh and the, just it's just delightful. Yeah. It's a sh- my favorite part about this video is like it's a terrible, shaky uh, cell phone video. Yeah. I can't believe there aren't more angles of it. This is the only one. Well, that there, we apparently have. there was is there? Well, on the article that I that I was I think the one that I sent you if you is like there's a here's a better version of it and you oh, could have clicked there. That. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, the one that anyway. I've been seeing going around is this t- this terrible one. And at the end of it, like the guy who's filming it, his yes. kid comes in and he's like yelling at his kid in the video, like trying to get him to get out of the way. And then he's trying to reason with him like, that's the guy who played Loki on the stage right there. <laughs> it's like, what? And <laughs> just listening to this wonderfully like trashy argument between a parent and oh, his child. So and oh. I died. But Tom Hiddleston, what can you not do? He, he can do nothing. He can't do anything. He can't, there's nothing he can't do. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know what I was doing. You know where I was yeah, going so, with that. You know, this is such he, a There's Monday. nothing he can't do. He yeah. is just a delightful human I know, and it's... He wins wonderful. at life. And yeah. he's friends with Jim Beaver. He's friends with Jim Beaver, him, which makes, like, that is one of the most endearing even things more about delightful, him. yes. Uh, oh. When they... When Jim Beaver talks about him, I just... I, I melt, and I'm like, why are we not all best friends? We can, like, hang out. I just want Jim Beaver to write about me, because the way he writes about... Tom, I mean, and I'm granted, Tom Hiddleston must be wonderful, but, like, just this... Gl- I mean, you yeah. could not... He could not have been glowing anymore. Right. I want Jim Beaver to write my like eulogy. Yes. I don't know why everything is about me dying today. It's oh, no, I'm it's coming to terms with my mortality, you guys. With your mortality. I am at uh, age 29, you know. But I do I want him to write my eulogy cuz he just uses such wonderful language when he talks about people and and every time he talks about a mentor he had or Tom it's Hiddleston like, or so whoever. So sincere. Yeah. Just, just right in the feels, guys. Right in the feels. Right I just sit the there and I'm like, oh, you. I still have to read his book, the one about his wife who passed away. Uh, Life's oh. that way. I'm sure, I'll nope. just cry through it. But yeah, sure. Man, it, I just love the way he writes. I love everything about yeah. him. And he writes these. Have you ever seen his book reviews on Goodreads? No. Let's see. I know how do I really see them? I barely Goodreads. go on. I barely yeah. even know how to log into Goodreads. This is true. Um, on Goodreads, every time I log into Goodreads, I'm always like, "Oh, what's my password?" And then it's like, "Automatically oh, logging you in with Facebook." I'm like, "Thank yeah. God." That's what I have no idea what my Goodreads password is. If the Facebook login ever stops working, I can never get into it again. Yeah. Um, but Jim Beaver uh, writes reviews of books, and he reads a lot, and he they're just like long, long, very intricate. Thoughtful thoughtful reviews of things yeah. uh, whether he likes them or not he's very like detailed in how why he feels the way he does about it and i just love that he's so endearing that way you know yeah. he's just the perfect grandpa who's oh. actually not that old he's probably not old enough to be my grandpa but i just feel like he's the he's perfect old. tv grandpa to my tv dad yeah oh, can you there imagine? you go oh scott bacula and jim beaver <laughs> Oh my god, for real. Also, did you see recently, uh, I don't remember if I sent it to you, it was a picture of Jim Beaver uh, with what he like really looks like when he's not in shows and he doesn't dye his hair brown and stuff like that. And he's like like? totally just like white, like white beard, white hair. Like Santa? He's like Santa. I think that's amazing. I, I, it like never crossed my mind. He looks like a different person. I yeah. never thought about the fact that I'm like, oh yeah, I guess maybe he's older. He would he would maybe have white hair. Totally different. He looks like 20 years older when he's in normal mode. Oh. Yeah. So uh, check out uh, Singing Hiddles. That's also on mm. the blog, along with the best interview blunder I have seen in a while. Uh, Kristen learned a new phrase. I uh, did. In I did not get it. I um, was like, oh, gosh. I watched it about three times before I'm like, I don't quite. 
get why this is so funny. Yeah, Dan Stevens, who played Matthew on um, mm. Downton Abbey, and now is like a skinny little hunk who is in action movies and stuff, um, is in an interview um, on British television. And this woman asks him, you know, you're you're playing an American soldier in this. And basically she's trying to say uh, there were probably a lot of Americans up for this role that you won it over. But what she says is, I bet you had to beat off a lot of American men. She <laughs> probably meant to, to say role. beat out. Cause yeah, that beat the out. Phrase? Like, I think beat that's out. the phrase she was going for. And Dan Stevens' eyes just get real big. And then he starts giggling. Yeah. And then she's like, why is that funny? Why are you laughing? Well, then yeah. her, like, co-interviewer is, like, trying to, like, yeah. step in and save her. And yeah, she- and, but she just said, and then she goes... She's like, what? I don't know why you're giggling. You you must have had to beat beat them off with the big stick. <laughs> and uh, he loses it, and he just he oh, can't. Yeah. And she's getting like more and more flustered by this. And the co-host like clarifies what she's trying to say, which I'm sure he understood what she was getting oh. at. But it was and just you couldn't phrasing. see his face, so he, yeah. God bless that guy. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, and she's like, and she tells him to compose himself. Like she's clearly getting yeah. kind of frustrated with him that like he's giggling at this. But I died. I like turned it off and laughed for like five minutes. Uh, uh, Dan Stevens' face is just perfect. Because you're used to him being this proper guy when he's on Downton yeah. and everything. Like, you can't imagine he's catching innuendo. And then he just loses it. Completely loses it. Um, and his and laugh is adorable. His and he's just so pretty. He's and that beard, pretty. I was like, I don't know what it is with me and guys with beards. I'm mm. into it. No, I'm super into beards. That's for sure. I feel like face is not complete till you put a beard on it. Um, Man, I would have done well in like the 1800s. <laughs> For real, uh, Kristen would have been a total harlot in the I 19th would have century. Up. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, um, yeah. Whew. This is why you watch so much Hell on Wheels, isn't it? It's for the beards, oh. for the facial hair. Oh my gosh, and also just Anson Mount's regular hair. Anson Mount is man. just so like. I don't even really know the word that I want to use for it because it's like it, thick and luxurious. And I yeah. just want to like braid it. One of oh my, my profs gosh. at Fullerton like would have said it's resplendent. Yeah, it's salt and pepper and beautiful and just full and oh yeah, we're yeah. Colin Bohannon, man, that guy, mm. beautiful. And I was like, Colin, that's such a cool name. I'm gonna name my kid that. And I'm like, I can't because that's the effing vampire in Twilight. Now I can't name my kid. Oh Colin. yeah, I bet there's like millions of them now, huh? I know. I'm super bummed about it because I'm like, Colin Bohannon. That is yeah, a that cool is a name. Rad name, dude. Uh, man. And it even dawned on me until I tried to like baby name what Colin meant. I'm like, oh, what does it yeah, mean? And then it came up. It was like, oh, it's the last. I'm like, oh, f that. No, never mind. Ugh. But anyway, his Twilight hair is ruins beautiful. everything. Even years later. I know. And honestly, side note, because I just looked up Timothy Odmanson, yeah. his profile in IMDb is a glorious picture. Is it, is it bearded? facial hair. Yeah, his he's beard is face- insane. It's, it's wonderful. Yeah. Well, and he's got this long wavy, he's very, he's channeling his ants and mountain hair with yeah. his hair. I know, that guy knows what it's up, what's up right there. And that's yeah. in the, uh, when he's walking through the Supernatural video, he's got the full beard. Does he? The hair oh. isn't all mm. that, as long in that, but Delightful. he's got the beard. And Delightful. Walks through. Because yes. um, the thing is, we haven't watched season nine yet of Supernatural. Um, but apparently, well, the binge watch is happening this weekend. Don't worry, people okay. at home. Um, but uh, he's apparently in an episode, and he's apparently phenomenal in it. As well. Of apparently, he is in this episode. Apparently, he's, do you already forget that video? Oh, with the little kid? <laughs> no, I thought he said allegedly. No, he says apparently. Oh. <laughs> allegedly well, would have been even ways. better. <laughs> allegedly. What? Allegedly would have been even better. <laughs> That's phenomenal. Um, <laughs> hey, did you hear um, two things also in terms of uh, uh, relationships in pop culture right now? Uh, Kate and Will are prego again. You guys, I'm so excited about this because I was, I'm kind of obsessed with Kate Middleton. Me too. And her wardrobe, and I love everything about it. And so her pregnancy wardrobe was so amazing. It was flawless. I'm like, 
I'm going to be that person that's like the size of a house. She's yeah. that person when she turns side, which like, oh, how cute. You're pregnant. That's adorable. You know? Yeah, right. And she's like adorable, but I'm going to be like the – so just yeah. seeing her just makes me – I don't know. It just gives me hope for some people of how cute they are. She <laughs> – so excited and, and that little baby george is adorable yeah and i really hope she has a girl oh my gosh can you imagine <laughs> i do too i honestly do i oh my gosh this, i was reading a thing that was saying this pushes uh prince harry back to like fifth in line for king or whatever prince like harry he will does never not be king he's no. living the dream he does not care one bit at all he just wants prince to do harry his like military thing and... rambunctious nights in vegas with yeah little consequences right okay it's like listen i'm never gonna care. rule this country whatevs uh he's living the dream and william has to be the respectable one which he wears very well and also like have you ever watched interviews with kate and will yes they're adorable they're wonderful oh my gosh the way they talk to each other is just great and i I feel like they don't take themselves very seriously and um they're just fun and yeah and her wardrobe like the great thing is she's one of those people who she wears stuff that she knows people want to emulate and so she wears like kind of cheap clothing so she'll wear like this awesome dress or whatever and it'll be like you can get that for 40 bucks at you know marks and spencer or something like that mm-hmm. and then it sells out immediately because right. everyone wants to dress like her but i think that's kind of a cool thing to do you know she's just rad yeah i know i just love her because i follow oh. a, um, a mindy project fashion blog um which is full of wonderful things but everything she wears costs like three thousand dollars yeah it's like you're you're not wearing that There's, yeah my style yeah. icons i don't dress like them but if i yeah. did it yeah. would be kate middleton and michelle obama those oh, are my psh. style icons please because when i'm like a mom and i'm like 45 i want to be dressing like michelle obama oh we can hope and have arms like michelle obama Ugh, Let's be i don't real even about have arms now too. like no. michelle obama and no. it's my greatest regret in life it is this is where i feel like i'm failing is not having michelle obama arms so i, I gotta work on that i don't know there's gotta know, be somewhere to, like, lift weights and stuff yeah I know. There's got to be a, a routine online somewhere that's like the Michelle Obama arm routine. You know, there's ones that you're supposed to be able to do like in your chair. Yeah. Or like at your desk. I have like weights and everything at my desk. And oh. every three weeks I remember they're there and use them. Um, usually I, I just forget. I When I trip over one of them and like stub my toe, I'm like, oh, right. Oh, yeah. I, I use those. Yeah, I had plans to use that for, for making my Obama arms. Mm-hmm. Uh, someday someday one this day. should be our goal Kristen. we're gonna get michelle obama arms one day just you wait one day we're gonna raise our arms up on the fan cave and you guys are we're gonna, gonna say what what sun's out guns happened? out what? it'll be great oh my god very good and then the other big relationship news though was that neil patrick harris and david Burtka oh my gosh. tied the I, knot. I missed the memo that they weren't married me too that's exactly what i thought i was like wait i thought they were already hitched no, they yeah. were just busy being perfect. Was that and was that picture actually from their wedding? The one that's like they're standing the across. One, it's yeah. kind of like at night. Is I it? I think it is. More they're facing each other. Yeah. And, yeah, I think is that's. From the there's wedding. no one like standing there like a pastor. Oh yeah, like an efficient or anything. Or something. So I was wasn't sure if they were. Yeah, if it's just like staged. Or if there was just yeah. a, or if it was just some random picture they found of the two of them looking adorable. Yeah. Either they're way. They're so cute. Oh my gosh, their Halloween picture from last year. Did you see it when they dressed? <laughs> Stop it right now. I can't even. Uh, I can't. They kill Ugh, me. So cute. I mean, the only thing I hate about them is that I can never be them. I know. <laughs> like, it uh, just seems unfair. And it was funny because I didn't get he, Neil Patrick Harris tweeted like, oh, I'm married, you know, yeah, whatever. We put, the tried, N we, and... we put the N in D and husband. I'm like, what's a husba? <laughs> is that a thing? Like, without a husband? And then yeah. I was like. Neil, d- Neil and- oh, yeah, okay. I see what you did there. It took me a minute, too. I was, like, trying to spell it out, and I was like, I don't think I get the joke. I'm like, oh, no, okay, yeah, that's their name. You names. guys are so cute. Yeah, that was just, he was just making a dad joke is what he was doing, yeah, and I'm not used making, to Neil Patrick Harris making should. dad jokes. But yeah, he's True. a dad. He should make dad jokes. That's fine. Yeah. Um, but, you know, big congratulations to those so blokes fun. on Yay. that. Um <laughs> That's pretty exciting. So uh, now with our time left, uh, we're going to play a little game. Oh, this man. Is, it's another BuzzFeed game. Uh, I love BuzzFeed games. BuzzFeed games are great. I already played it, though, um, and so Kristen is the one who is going to attempt fail to name this. So uh, there was a, and I've seen it going around today, too. It's trending again. But explain the film plot badly is the hashtag going around on Twitter right now. The idea 
is that people explain a film plot badly. Um, and they're, you have to try to figure out what the heck movie they're talking about. Sometimes it's obvious, other times not so much. So, Kristen, All right. are you ready Hit to me. try it? I am. So let's go with number one Kay. from at Win Richards. A boy befriends a bearded hermit and two gay robots, goes into space, snogs his sister, and kills his dad. Oh, I know that one. Okay. Star Wars. Oh, yeah. Definitely Star Wars. Um, that yeah, was that's that's kind of a gimme. Snogs. I'm like, oh, is this a British film? <laughs> oh. You overthought that. I did. I was definitely giving it more credit than was due. Okay. Yeah. It's next one from Niall Doherty. Bloke punches himself, encourages others to punch him, leaves his job, shaves his head. Bad influence on Meatloaf. Meatloaf the person or Meatloaf the food? Is it a capital M? <laughs> it's a capital M. Is this Fight Club? That's Fight Club. I haven't seen it, and I don't know if Meatloaf is in it, and I honestly don't even know what Meatloaf looks like. You don't know what Meatloaf looks like? Haven't you seen Spice World? Yeah, I see in that. Yeah, he's the bus driver in Spice World. Oh, he is? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Well. Uh, he was also on Ghost Hunters, and he was in Rocky Horror Picture Show. I definitely haven't seen that. Oh, yeah, yeah you're killing me, Smalls. I know. Okay. Sorry. I haven't also seen Purple Rain, so. Purple Rain. I live in a, I live in a hole. Yeah, you do. Okay. We'll work okay. on that. Tom Jameson says... Reclusive weirdo and his mutant employees lure children into his factory with sweets, then dispose of them one by one. <laughs> Guesses? Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Correct. Or Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, depending on yeah. how creepy you want to get. Yeah, this one says Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Okay. But, um, yeah. Okay. Half fish, half woman sells vocal cords to kiss random bloke. <laughs> <laughs> Little mermaid. <laughs> Yeah, it really uh, mm, doesn't sound as good when you put it that way. Um, this one, this one's a little, this one's a little trickier. Okay. Man buys singing rabbit from Chinatown. Rabbit gets wet and breeds lizards. Lizards destroy town. Godzilla? No. Wait. The, I think buys the, a singing rabbit. Yeah, the rabbit gets wet and breeds lizards part. I think is what you need to to use. Breeds lizards. Snakes gets, on a plane. Gets wet and breeds lizards. Gremlins? Yes, it's gremlins. Yeah. That was a weird one. That was definitely that a... That was a weird one. That was a tricky, tricky one right there. But that was horribly explained. Yeah! <laughs> like, that one definitely sold it. Uh, okay. A very old-looking teenage girl wears hot pants and learns to smoke to win her boyfriend back. Then they sing. <laughs> oh, Grease. <laughs> That might be my favorite. A very like old a very looking old teenager. Looking high school. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Um, okay. Hamlet with lions, but better than Hamlet. Also singing. Hamlet with lions. What's a movie with lions? Oh, Lion King. <laughs> it's like, hmm. Yeah, just, what's a movie with lions? These are lions? the movies that went through my head. Okay, A Ghost in the Darkness. <laughs> I don't even That's know what that is. That's the one is. with Michael Douglas, and he plays the lion hunter. Oh. Val Kilmer. <laughs> okay. And then I thought, secondhand lions? <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't think that's the plot of that movie. I'm nope. pretty sure it's Definitely. not. Well, that's why I was so confused. I'm like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Badly explained. Well done, oh. technically, Ron. Oh. Uh, from Scriblet. Yeah, this is an easy one. Innocent staff turned into teapot, clock, and candlestick rely on Stockholm Syndrome to save themselves and loved ones. The Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. I, n I never like that whole, like, you know, Stockholm Syndrome thing people keep bringing up about that movie. I feel like that's the cool way to criticize Beauty and the Beast right now. Well, and technically, it wasn't his fault. They all got turned into something. Yeah, they were all cursed. I mean, I mean, yes, it was his fault, but he didn't personally yeah. turn them into to keep them there. Exactly. They could have left if they wanted. Yeah, they what just would have left and been candlesticks and teapots yeah. in the crazy world. You want to be a talking world. teapot? Why? What? Yeah, I don't... You can't, you don't have any feet. Yeah, there's no reason to, no. to leave yeah. there. I don't, so, yeah, I don't, I don't that. yeah, that whole idea that, like, Belle, it's Stockholm, I don't, she's only there for a little while anyway, I mean, come on. Um, anyway, this one's from Tim Carmody. Russian sailor who dreams of polygamous freedom in America dies on submarine. The Hunt for Red October? That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> that one threw me off when I did it, I was like, Poly That's the only thing I know about a Russian and a submarine. I'm like, the hunt for Red October. <laughs> gotcha. I didn't know he wanted to. Yeah. What? 
Yeah. Okay. Like, okay. Sure. I'll buy it. Uh, this is another kind of easy one uh, from Dean Burnett. Patrick Stewart sets up a school for dangerous adolescents where none of the staff have any teaching qualifications. <laughs> <laughs> have they even been fingerprinted? <laughs> I'm sure they haven't had TB tests, that's for sure. Oh, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. X-Men. Yeah. Um, This one. Old man with balloons abducts young boy after his wife leaves him. There's a dog involved. (laughs) He doesn't leave him, she dies. Yeah. Up. Yeah, see, that's that's definitely explaining it badly. I mean, if unless leaving him is this guy's euphemism for kicking the bucket, I suppose. Um This is good. Obvious, but good. A large iceberg's peaceful, calm life comes to an abrupt end as largest (laughs) ship collides with it. (laughs) Yes. I love when you spin it. I actually think someone should do a Titanic movie from the iceberg's point of view. I would would watch it. I'd probably enjoy it more than the the original. How dare you? Well, I'm just saying. This one's from At Darth. Yeah, it's just pretty nice. They managed to cap, cap, get that Twitter name. Captain America says there is only one god. Hangs out with two gods the whole movie. Like, no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> the Avengers. Yep. Uh, a couple of tiny little blokes take three long films to return a piece of unwanted jewelry. <laughs> uh, the Lord of the Rings. Yes. That's a good one. Uh, <laughs> an like archaeologist one. fails to get an important religious artifact into a museum. Wait, which guy? An archaeologist fails to get an important religious artifact into a museum. Indiana Jones? Yeah. It belongs in a museum. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. He does say that. Yep. Yeah. I was like, that kind of threw me off. I'm like, was he... But he wasn't was like, he I'm thinking he's it? trying to actually physically get to the museum. Like, like this, he yeah. to do. <laughs> and he's just I'm being like, blocked at all angles by yeah. people keeping him from getting to the Smithsonian. <laughs> it's like inverse night you at the museum. That movie that was on like sci-fi and it was three movies and it was the librarian with Noah Wiley. He I essentially played one. a kind of, he was a derpy Indiana Jones. So mm-hmm. Indiana Jones was like sexy and yeah, cool. Yeah. Whereas like the librarian is not cool. And he, and it's kind of a mix between um, Indiana Jones and Warehouse 13 where they have he's trying to get these religious or these like artifacts that have powers you know is this recent ish probably in the past five years maybe huh. or six I don't maybe, know how I missed ten. that I watch a lot of sci-fi channel I think it was sci-fi it hmm. should have been it had Jane Curtin in it and um, really oh what's his name from um oh god you can do um, it he's so famous <laughs> He's so famous. <laughs> uh, is he American? Is he yeah? Brit- and okay, he's American. old, That's and old. he kind of is like very serious, the straight man. He's, and I can't even name you the show. He's explain in. an actor him. badly. The show hashtag. is named after him. No, he has his own show that's named after him. Remember one time on the Emmys, they did this whole thing where they put him in this Bob Newhart. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Winner. Was it my impression? Impression of this. <laughs> you should have said Papa Elf then I'd be with oh, you that would have been a way better thing I was so hung up on the fact that I, his name was the show and it was driving me crazy oh yeah yeah new heart I went with a, a random episode of the Emmys when they put him in that chamber and there's only enough air until the show you know? yeah I don't remember that but the new heart thing got me yeah. right okay Good. so I'll look up that that uh the librarian librarian movie. very cheesy and awesome yeah I'm gonna skip that one that was too easy okay this one, this one threw me off because I don't. I think I don't understand the question. I mean, the statement. Boy okay. learns to dance with no effect on pit closure. Pit closure? Yeah, I don't know what pit closure means. Uh, do you, is that step up? No. Footloose? No. Flash dance? Let's think about the boy learns to dance part. Billy Elliot? Yes, Billy Elliot. The pit. I don't know what pit closure means. Are we talking about like armpit? Or like, <laughs> like a. Does that have something to do with like? Bo- I don't know. I have no idea what it means. That was tricky. It was um, tricky. This one's obvious, but I think it's worth reading just because it's funny. And I, and I've seen this one circulating for years, so this person totally plagiarized. But it says an underage girl runs away from a Kansas farm with three unemployed drifters, does drugs, and goes on a killing spree. <laughs> <laughs> the Wizard of Oz. Yes. Uh, uh, this one's a little too uh, vulgar. I'm not going to read it. Um, 
even the name of the person who posted it is vulgar. <laughs> so uh, if you're interested, you guys can go to the link on the blog and you can see what I just um, <laughs> skipped. Uh, a bunch of white whiny kids spend a day together in detention. In the end, they're still white and whiny. Breakfast Club. Yes. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Here's an obvious one, but a good obvious one. A guy wakes up on Groundhog's Day. A guy wakes up on Groundhog's Day. A guy wakes up on Groundhog's Day. <laughs> you guys, I know I'm the, that person, the only person. That movie bugs me to no end. Why? I don't understand. I just, I don't, it just bugs me. Everything about it. I don't like the rep, rep, and repetitiveness, which obviously is the point of it. Yeah, yeah. I just, not my favorite. Okay, that's fine, I guess. Have Sorry. you seen 1408? 1408 is that the, John the serial killer one about the door in the hotel it's that's the room number yeah i don't know about the serial killer part but it is that's not a serial killer i just assumed it was no, i've never so seen you have it. not Everybody seen it up. clearly nope. um, is that what the next one is 14 no 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 it's just it made me think of it because in groundhog day every day he wakes up to it's sunny and share right i got you babe that comes on the i don't remember i think that's what it is sure. um and then in 1408, as he's trying to go to sleep every, like, few minutes, his uh, his alarm clock goes off to, we've only just begun. We've only yeah. just begun. Yeah. You know, that. Super creepy. Which then just makes Groundhog Day creepy to me because then it makes me think of 1408. It's a cycle. Anyway. It's a vicious, vicious cycle. <laughs> it's a good description and obvious. Old man pretends to teach teenage boy karate to make him do chores. <laughs> Daniel son. Wax off. Karate kid. Wax off. So good. Uh, <laughs> this girl turns everything to ice and you will never get that song out of your head. Please make it stop. <laughs> let it go. Let it go. I'm one with the wind and sky. Frozen. <laughs> Nailed it. This one is really quite obvious. Okay. Snakes on a plane. <laughs> I already guessed Nick's on a plane. You did. You already that guessed Nick's on a plane. It must be something else. Must be something different than that, obviously. Um, it would be kind of funny if it was something other than Snakes on a plane. Um, a white boy in England is told he is special. He is special. Then he goes to a private school. Oh, Harry Potter. Yes. <laughs> Nicely done. You aced that. I did. Sort you of. Did ace that. Sort of. Yeah. I mean, with a few. Exceptions. I got a little murky there around Billy Elliot and. Yeah. Gremlins. Yeah. I'm still, I haven't seen Billy Elliot in like, Years. like since it came out, basically. I, we watched it in high school, I remember, and I don't have any recollection of why we were watching that movie. Probably just one of my teachers liked it. Figured it, we could apply it to something. Um, Following your dreams? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. My teachers were not follow your dreams type. They were more like, no. you know, demoralize you until you fell in line so i don't know what they would have been thinking with that but yeah. <laughs> um but yeah i haven't seen it since then so maybe the pit closure thing is like more obvious if mm. you've seen it maybe in the last decade uh possible but there we go so uh, there's that uh and so we have completed all of our things today and i'm pretty impressed with us because i was afraid that we were going to take like three hours because there was so much to get through but we did a good job you're good we're we, we know really what's up job so you guys this is our first time at the rodeo Corey. <laughs> it's not our first time at the rodeo as they true. say as the old saying goes um uh, uh oh so a couple things remember you guys netflix roulette watch the code, code red. red the rubicon conspiracy that and tell us what you think we will talk about this next week um and then Don't usually give homework but when we do yeah. it's terrible movies from netflix it is so uh we're pretty excited about it um and then the other thing uh remember the fan cave fiction club on goodreads uh we are reading the never-ending story right now and everybody is getting a kick out of it so make sure that you join in on this nostalgia fest uh go to you can go to the blog and find it or go on goodreads and search for fan cave fiction club you can join us to talk about it we'll be meeting up on google plus to video chat about it on september 19th so mark it on your calendar and be there because it's gonna be awesome yeah so Anyways, that's all for us for this week. Thanks for listening to the Electric Fan Cave and ElectricFeast.com. Make sure that you subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Tumblr, Twitter, wherever you can find us. You should subscribe to us on it because you do not want to miss anything we have to say. No Sometimes way. Kristen even tweets. 
Can you Sometimes. believe that? It's crazy. I tweeted this week. She tweeted this week uh, about Little Rascals. So you don't want to miss that. That's, uh, it's important that you follow us. Um, so and you have to check it every day just in case I randomly tweet. Yeah. This is like the racetrack playa. It's so it's, it's yeah so rare that it you happens never know. that you have to be constantly vigilant. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, so check us out on all those things. If you like us, remember to rate and review us on iTunes. And hey, share us with your friends on Facebook and all that jazz. Tweet about us. Whatever. We want to hear more from you guys and spread the love and meet all your friends and whatnot because we're pretty social and whatnot. Um, so until next week when we will be back at you with our friend Kristen Froberg, um, who is an awesome playwright and all around funny person, um, we are Corrigan Vaughn. I'm Kristen Latterell. So peace out, everybody. Well, my grandmother waves like this, which I think is adorable because she's 90. <laughs> That's like a little kid waiting to wave. She's oh, like, bye-bye. Bye. When I was a kid, because this is the way, this explains everything about my like spatial reasoning as an adult. When I was a kid, I used to wave like this because when people waved at me, I saw this. And so I thought I was doing the same thing because I could see the inside of my hand. It's like, yeah, that's wow. totally how you wave. 